cataractcoach.com. This critical sign predicts zonular weakness in pseudoexfoliation. And here we can see these deposits. So we're starting off doing this case, and if you look at the peripheral pupil margin, the edge of the lens, you can see the fibrillar deposits are very characteristic of pseudoexfoliation. We'll make our main incision here. We've already filled the anterior chamber with our dispersive viscoelastic to protect the cornea. And we'll start our capsular axis. And so when we start the capsular axis, we're going to look carefully here at the lens capsule and see if there are any wrinkling. We poke in. It looks pretty good. The capsule's nice and taut. No wrinkling. That's a great sign. And so now we know we're going to have reasonable zonules, but what were the clinical signs we could examine and see the patient in the pre-op clinic during the consultation? What signs there would let us know about zonular weakness and pseudoexfoliation? And the answer is two things. One is the degree of dilation. If the pseudoexfoliation is relatively mild, the pupil will dilate beautifully and the zonules will probably be pretty strong. And that's this case. Normal zonules, no weakness at all, looks great. If the pre-op dilation in your clinic is very poor, just two millimeters or three millimeters, that's a sign of pretty severe pseudoexfoliation. But there's one more very critical sign that we see in the pre-op testing area that lets us know whether or not there'll be issues with the zonules during surgery. Now let's do a quick phaco chop here before we get to that, just to show you our technique, buzzing in the nucleus, digging in the chopper, there are two halves, and now with that five millimeter capsule axis, we can easily bring a hemi-nucleus up and emulsify it in the iris plane. And very important, we do want that five or even five and a half millimeter capsule rexus just to prevent or limit the amount of capsular contraction and phimosis that we may get from the anterior capsular opening. The critical sign you'll see in the clinic is the relationship of the anterior chamber depth to the axial length. This patient has a normal axial length of about 24 millimeters. And at the pre-op clinic, the AC depth was normal at about 3 millimeters deep. That's very typical. The danger sign is a very shallow anterior chamber in the presence of a normal or long axial length. If the axial length was 24, but the anterior chamber depth was 1.8, that'd be a bad sign because that would mean that the entire lens iris diaphragm is moving forwards and shallowing the anterior chamber. That's why we see the shallow AC. And in fact, in the clinic, if you have this patient lie back in the exam chair into a supine position, and then you examine the anterior segment just using your indirect ophthalmoscope for lighting and your 20 diopter lens for magnification, you'll notice the anterior chamber deepens when the patient's in the supine position. Again, noting weakness and too much mobility of the lens iris diaphragm, that's because of zonular weakness and laxity. And so if a patient has a shallow AC in the presence of a normal axial length with pseudoexfoliation, and on top of that they have poor dilation in the pre-op period, just be prepared for very weak zonules during surgery. And when you operate, the first sign you'll notice of the weak zonules is a deep anterior chamber. You put the viscoelastic in and you get a three or four millimeter deep anterior chamber, whereas in the pre-op notes, it said it was 1.8 millimeters deep. The next sign is when you poke into the lens capsule to start that capsular axis, you'll have a tremendous number of wrinkles. A lot of wrinkling of the ca anterior capsule will make it more difficult to do the rexus, and that's because of zonular laxity. In those cases as well, you need to be prepared for a lot of zonular weakness and maybe even need for additional support to help fixate the eye into position. Here we're putting a single piece of acrylic lens in the capsule bag. It goes in quite nicely. We'll do a little polishing there of the anterior lens capsule as well. Get those cells from the undersurface of the anterior capsule rim. That should help somewhat in preventing um, capsular phimosis in the post-op period. That looks great. We can see a 5 millimeter rexus. Let's remove our viscoelastic and finish up the case. And again, this is one of those cases where I've showed you the complete case from start to finish. There's a lot of learning and watching in a complete case with all steps shown. And this is a good example of that. And just finishing up, taking out our viscoelastic, we'll seal up the incisions here. So again, our two critical signs are poor dilation and a shallow anterior chamber in the presence of a normal or long axial length. 
those are going to have a lot more issues with Zion laxity. Check out cataractcoach.com, our teaching website. We have a ton of great material, much more than you'll find here on YouTube. And it's all categorized with a full list of all videos. Very easy to search. You can just watch 10 videos on Pseudo-X. Check it out. I bet you like it.